collaboration with BrainMind, we will now discuss ApoE4, the gene and its implications on Alzheimer's disease and brain health. Nature or nurture? What, what's the cause of Alzheimer's disease? Well, probably a combination. While genes may not be our destiny, there are certain genes that can either increase or decrease our risk of developing Alzheimer's disease dementia. The most commonly studied and the most widely understood gene is called the ApoE4 gene, or really it's the ApoE4 allele, or the ApoE4 variant would be a much more accurate way of using the terminology. So let's discuss this in a little more detail. When it comes to a person's DNA, people have 23 chromosomes that are a mix from mom and dad. And there are different variants or alleles or types of the ApoE gene. ApoE stands for apolipoprotein E. That's all it is. It's a lipoprotein gene. Lipids, proteins. It's a cholesterol gene. But why is it implicated in Alzheimer's disease? Apolipoprotein E4 is the specific variant that increases a person's risk for Alzheimer's, potentially. ApoE has three forms. ApoE2, which is the least common form, ApoE3, which is by far the most common, and ApoE4. You get one from your mom and one from your dad. So people can have different combinations. By far, the most common combination is an ApoE3-3, meaning a person has two ApoE3 variants. At least 50, 60, even 65% of the population has this neutral risk for Alzheimer's, ApoE3-3. If a person has an ApoE2 variant from mom or dad, that can actually decrease a person's risk and be protective against Alzheimer's disease, and also protective against cardiovascular disease and even high cholesterol. So as you can see, there is some interplay here between cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, and genetic risk for Alzheimer's. But what if a person has one single copy or variant of the ApoE4 gene, really more accurately known as the ApoE4 allele? When a person has one copy of four, it increases a person's risk by a little bit. If a person has two copies of ApoE4, it increases a person's risk more so. However, as we started out by saying, genes are not your destiny. You can win the tug of war against your genes. And specifically, when it comes to the ApoE4 variant, that's something that when I hear that a patient has, I know what I'm up against. In science, we now understand the pathological pathways that a person with the ApoE4 variant is up against when it comes to Alzheimer's disease pathology. We can actually give a person a targeted, very precise plan personalized based on their genetics to try to mitigate, reduce, or hopefully prevent them from developing Alzheimer's disease dementia. So when it comes to how common these variants are, about 25% of the population has at least one copy or one ApoE4 variant. But there's about 1% of the population that may have two copies of the ApoE4 variant. So if Mr. Smith has one or two copies, I'm going to give that person therapies A, B, and C tailored for that ApoE4 gene. When it comes to Mrs. Jones, well, Mrs. Jones doesn't have an ApoE4 variant. So based on her ApoE gene, I'm going to do therapies X, Y, and Z. And this is a type of medicine called personalized medicine, where we're delivering care that's more precise, more individualized based on a person's genetics. Now, ApoE4 is just not the entire picture. Some people find out their ApoE4 status by doing commercial testing at home. There's a variety of at-home based tests that you can send away. You spit into a little tube, you send it away, and then you get your report, and it can tell you whether you have zero, one, or two variants of this ApoE4. However, there are multiple genes that we'll go into more detail about that can actually work in collaboration with E4 to either increase or decrease that person's risk. And most importantly, there are lifestyle changes, medical conditions, cardiovascular conditions, and specifically vascular risk factors that if we can take control over, we can make that person's ApoE4 variant work better for them and ideally neutralize 
the negative effects of the ApoE4 gene, meaning maybe we can get that person off the road to Alzheimer's by doing very specific things in that person's life and medical care. And the take home point here is that we have a lot of the answers from a pharmacogenomic and a nutrigenomic perspective, but we don't have all the answers just yet. So let's define those terms. Pharmacogenomic means that different drugs work differently depending on if a person has that E4 variant or not. Well, nutrigenomic means that a person will respond to different food types differently if that person has an ApoE4 variant or not. So the key with precise or personalized medical care that we've studied quite extensively in our lab and that we've written about quite a bit in the literature is that different people with different genes may need to take different drugs, may need to have different dietary choices, and may need to live a different type of lifestyle and have medical and cardiovascular conditions treated more aggressively or comprehensively where a borderline cholesterol, most doctors would shrug off and say, ah, oh, you're fine. No, you're not fine. If a person has an ApoE4 variant, that person's cholesterol better be perfect, especially if that person has a family history of Alzheimer's disease and their family member also had the ApoE4 variant. People can take different roads to Alzheimer's. Some people may be on the ApoE4 road. Other people may be on different roads. So we need to truly understand by taking a deep dive into a person's individual biology, a concept called precision medicine that we'll talk about more. But understanding ApoE4 is really one of the most important aspects of individualizing care for people at risk. The other aspect of ApoE4 is it affects different people differently. For example, women with an ApoE4 gene are at a higher risk. Men with an ApoE4 gene may be a little bit more protective. But again, this is an individual discussion because if a man has elevated cholesterol and an ApoE4 gene, I'm almost equally concerned about that man. When it comes to ApoE4 and the interaction between a person's advancing age, there's again an interaction. Younger people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, for example, may be more protected from developing Alzheimer's disease at that age. But as a person gets older in their 60s and 70s, age is the number one risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. And when you add the synergistic negative impacts of the ApoE4 gene, age plus the ApoE4 gene puts a person at a higher risk for Alzheimer's disease. However, that risk is due to late onset Alzheimer's disease rather than early onset. There's some also some interesting research trying to understand, for example, the effects of head trauma. Are people that have head trauma who also have the ApoE4 gene more at risk? Are people that are exposed to certain types of pesticides that have the ApoE4 gene, are they at more risk of people without that gene, that variant? Maybe they're not as high a risk. These are things that we're learning. The other aspect is certain vitamins, like we talked about pharmacogenomics. For example, people with two variants, two ApoE4 variants, really need to pay attention to their vitamin D. Maybe they need to take a vitamin D supplement. At a minimum, they need to check their vitamin D and understand a specific level. Because a specific vitamin D level in a person with two ApoE4 variants has to be higher and more well-tuned than a person without those two variants. So the take-home points about ApoE4 is that we can use these results to better personalize care, to better stratify a person's risk. And we really have to understand that just having the gene alone is not, and I repeat, does not definitively cause Alzheimer's disease. It's a risk gene, and it's something that we can do something about.